What is up, guys? Welcome back to the freaking channel, Walking on Water. In today's episode, we are out here on Hayden Lake. It's seven in the morning, and we are kokanee fishing today. And I wanted to go over five ways that you guys can catch more kokanee this spring and just talk about a little bit of my setups and what you can do to improve your chances of going out and limiting out on kokanee, okay? If you wanna learn five tricks and tips on how to catch more kokanee, stay tuned in this video. Like, subscribe, and share out to your buddies or your friends if this video helps you in any freaking way. I would greatly appreciate it. Help me a ton and it's free for you. So thank you guys for watching. Let's get into kokanee fishing, baby. The first trick and tip, not really a trick and tip, it's just a well-known fact to get you guys on more kokanee this spring is your troll speeds. A lot of people, a lot of salmonoid and salmon fit type fish, class fish, like to be trolled at 1.5 to 2 miles an hour. Kokanee is a salmon, yes, and, it, and we are trolling for it, but you do not want to be at the 1.5 mile an hour mark. You want to actually be a lot slower than that, okay? So, as you can see here on the fish finder, we're going 1.1 miles an hour up to about 1.2 miles an hour and you can even go all the way down to 0.9 miles an hour up to 1.3 miles an hour so 0.9 up to 1.3 miles an hour is going to help you guys succeed on getting on a lot of these spring kokanee out here anything faster than that your little dodger or flasher in the water is basically just doing a 360 and it's not helping you catch any fish whatsoever. It's just scaring them away, okay? So speed is the number one thing that you're gonna wanna dial in. That's why, yes, <clears throat> excuse me. That's why yesterday I had to go back up to Cabela's and I had to pick up one of these 30 inch drift socks because I had two of the 18 inch and it wasn't bringing me down to speed. So I had to pick up a 30 inch drift sock and we are going the perfect speed for Kokanee right now. Thank God, because I didn't think anything was gonna slow us down, frick. I tried everything, buckets, 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 bigger buckets, five gallon buckets, and the 30 inch drift socks doing it, so I'm stoked on that. But the number one thing is speed. Doing any good? No, nothing yet. I've been on for like 30 minutes though, but nothing yet. What's your uh, YouTube channel? Walking on water? No, it is not. Yeah, it is. What's up, dude? What's up, man? I got your uh, freaking uh, brain picture here. Let's go. It works, man. Yeah, it does. I got it last year and we knocked it dead. Good. I'm glad to hear it. That's awesome to hear, man. Seriously. Good seeing you, buddy. Yeah, good seeing you. I hope you guys have a great day. You too, man. And now, guys, that's exactly why you brine your freaking corn right there. As you can tell, the, the guy passing by, he's been using my corn for a while now, and he's is absolutely killing the kokanee out here. So it's just good to see, good to hear, good to see some response from the community that's awesome so shout out to that guy but let's talk about the second tip and trick that can get you guys on more spring kokanee and that is corn today i'm just trying out um the potskis fire choupe corn and i wanted to try this out because i always brine my own corn if you want to learn how to brine your own corn which is very successful and has put in tons of fish in the boat then go over to my channel walking on water and check out how to brine out summer and spring kokanee corn great corn it will catch you fish every freaking time but i was in a pinch so i picked some of this up at cabela's last night when i was grabbing the drift sock every time you go out on the water you want some kind of brine corn okay whether it's potskis fire brine corn or you brine your own corn um shoe pay corn by itself i'm not saying it won't do the trick and some people even use a little bit different styles of baits they don't even use corn they use maggots and stuff like that that's great too but some kind of bait that you're gonna need to put on the end of your hooks to catch a lot more of these kokanee. Now, if you don't have if you don't have time to freaking brine your own corn and stuff like that, then they do sell, you know, fire corn like this in a little jug just like this. And I've had very successful days on similar stuff to this, but I've never tried this one in particular. So we're out here today. We're gonna try this out, but. Tip number two is to always have some kind of bait or brine corn, whether it's maggots or corn, shoe pay corn to be exact, and throw a little salt, throw a little brine in there, and you guys are gonna catch a lot more kokanee. Oh yeah, baby. Fish on. There we go, finally. 
First fish of the freaking day. There we go, baby. Just put the line back down. Dropped it down a couple more feet. And this is gonna bring me This is gonna bring us to our next tip and trick for kokanee fishing. We're gonna talk about leader length and why leader length matters while fishing for kokanee, especially when you're using such small dodgers. So we're gonna talk about how long your leader should be Oh, it's a nice fish. Talk about how long your leader should be. Man, these softback kokanee rods just do the job. It's so sick. Okuma, Celio, kokanee rod. Small adjustments always lead to fish. Oh yeah, baby. We're on the board now. That's a nice kokanee. That is a nice kokanee. Let's go. Okay guys, we're gonna talk about leader lake before we put this back down into the water. Absolutely gorgeous. Hayden Lake, North Idaho. Spring kokanee right there, ladies and gentlemen. Leader length and why does leader length matter, okay? I see a lot of people all the time not really following the rule of, so the rule is, usually the rule is double the length of your dodger should be your leader, okay? And as you can tell, this is like a four inch dodger. And so I have an eight inch leader and why does that matter, okay? I have a video of these Dodgers actually moving in the water and these kokanee lures following them while they're in the water. So if you wanna see that video, go over to my channel, Walking on Water, and check it out. But double the length of your Dodger leader is important because these require movement in the water, okay? To where the Dodger is moving slightly because it's a small four inch Dodger, okay? So there's not a whole lot of movement to this Dodger. It's moving back and forth. If this is too long and it's out here, this trail uh, lure or hoochie has no action unless you have a spinner blade on it which I still would only recommend an 8 to a 10 inch leader so the number three most important step to catching spring kokanee is using the length of leader that is required to catch them and that's anywhere from 8 to 12 inches in some cases but to be safe I would never go beyond 10. Let's go out and bonk another fish guys. Like, subscribe, and share the video out to some friends and buddies or some family members if they're getting ready to go kokanee fishing or they want to learn something and if you just enjoy the content. Thank you guys. We're going to get back at it and catch you guys some more fish. Or just go hit on letting it out. Oh my gosh, that was insane. Fish, 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 fish. Fish on. Fish on, baby. Well, that's a nice fish. All right, guys. This is going to bring us into our fourth tip and trick to get you guys on more spring kokanee. I might have lost it. No, it's there. The fourth tip to get you guys on more spring kokanee. And that is always when you're trolling for kokanee, you should always be essing through your trolls, okay? As you're moving in the water system, you should be, this fish came alive right at the boat. You should always be 
S curving and when you do get on fish, you don't leave the fish. So many people, so many times have caught fish and they just keep trolling straight and they troll for another hour until they find more fish. That's the thing. These kokanee congregate. They're a school of fish. They're moving around the water system feeding and what you want to do is when you get on these kokanee, you need to stay there. Fish that area for a little while. S through, figure eight through. Man, these are nice fish. These are actually really nice fish for Hayden Lake. It was swimming right at me for a minute. So just like that, we're not even a hundred yards from where we got all those hits, okay? And we got one hit, two hit, and then we got linked up. So do not leave the spots you're fishing. Do not leave the spots you're fishing to travel straight down the lake. You should be essing through the lake, and when you find fish, you gotta stay on the fish. Figure eight back through that spot, fish it till it dries up. If you don't get nothing on the next couple passes, then move on. Stay on top of the fish, guys. That's how we're catching these kokanee here today. Absolutely gorgeous. They're pretty good size, they're thick, they're meaty. Gonna get some nice fillets off these. There we go. Fish on, baby. There we go. Let's go. Yes. I called, I said, come on, fish. And then fish on. I hope we still have it. Yep, there it is, it just woke up. Okay, guys, as we're reeling in this fish here, let's go over the fifth step that's gonna help you guys get on more spring kokanee. This fish just came alive. And that is your depth. And we're gonna, we're gonna tag team this with another one, but at different times of the year, these fish are placed throughout the water system at different depths, okay? So when the springtime comes and the water temperature on the surface warms up to about 55 degrees, kokanee thrive in 52 degree water temperature. So what does that mean? To reach that, that temperature of water, you don't have to go super deep. So in the springtime, you're realistically looking at the top 30 feet of the water system. It's a nice fish. Top 30 feet of the water system to catch these kokanee. Right now, I'll give you the exact depth that I'm at right now. I'm at 23 feet deep in the water system, and this is my third fish on the exact same setup at the exact same depth, okay? Now, if you're talking summertime, when the water temperatures go up to 75 degrees, then you're gonna have to go a lot deeper. That's why you're looking at 40 to 50 feet deep during the summertime versus the spring, okay? So water depth is in water temperature, or the fifth tip I'm giving you guys, oh, this is a nice fish. Fifth tip I'm giving you guys to get on more spring kokanee. Now, also, these kokanee, these kokanee are extremely hard to get in the boat without a net, okay? So tag team with water depth and temperature, we're gonna just throw in there. You need a freaking kokanee net just like this to bonk these freaking fish, okay guys? I tried boat flipping kokanee before, they have super soft mouths and it's super hard to catch these fish without a net, okay? So get a net, get a nice, I got a short pole on this one cause I'm in a kayak, but if you're in a boat, you want a nice long net so you don't have to get these fish that close to the boat cause once you do, they go absolutely freaking ham, and it's just so hard to get them in the boat. A lot of times you lose them. This is a nice freaking fish, guys. All right, guys. Thank you so freaking much for tuning into this episode of Walking on Water. I hope these five tips and tricks will help you guys get on a lot more spring kokanee. That's a wrap for the morning for me. Next week, we are traveling down to the Columbia River, so I will see you on the Columbia this freaking week. Again, like, subscribe, and share these videos out to anybody that could use the help trying to catch more spring kokanee. And just smash the like button even if you enjoyed the video. So thank you guys so much. I will see you guys on the Columbia River.